Hey everybody. Um, as you can tell, I made like a little makeshift haggard thrown together a little teardrop display here. Uh, I've seen a lot of questions on you know Facebook and YouTube on how how to run wiring for the teardrops. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. Um, I've had no issues with mine, so I figure I'll pass along. Try to make it super easy for everybody. Um, but once your framing is you know done, you have your rungs in. I don't have them all here because I just threw this together with about a half hour. So uh, what you do is all the rungs, depending on if you're gonna run your power source from inside the camper, like a fuse panel. Don't put batteries inside your camper, please. Don't do that. But if you put a few, when you put a fuse panel here, or whether it's in the tongue box, uh, you want to run the wire. So to, how I run the wire is I will come up through the floor, and then through every rung, I would drill a little hole. Let me show you right there. I like that one. And depending on how many lights you run, say if this was for the, you know, vent fan it would have be on its own separate wire. For the inside lights, I would drill another hole and run that to the lights. And for it's for like an outside, uh, the outside light for above the door, you can drill another hole. But just keep all the hole, every power needs its own hole. So you can run your wire right through it. So you would run it up through into here Obviously, you do this stage before you do uh, put the ceiling in. Uh, it's not easy one-handed. Here we go. Now you bring it up through. It will look like that. And what I use, I use these little clips here to hold the wire. Uh, I don't use staples because if you nick the wire, you can create a short, and obviously you don't want a short within the, you know, ceiling and the, and the roofing material. You don't want that. So you're gonna want to keep everything nice and tidy, nice and tight. Don't use staples or a lot of other, you know, sketchy items. And you would like run it through there. Can't do it one-handed, but you'd run it through there, and then once it's got it where you want it, you just screw it in, and it tightens it right up. But they make different brands of these. You can get them on Amazon, eBay, really cheap. You can get like a hundred of them for like three, four bucks. Okay, so once you do that, you're gonna have your wire left over, which is gonna go to your whatever you're hooking up, whether it's a fan or lights. In this case, it's gonna be a little dome light. This is the same one I have in my teardrop. And what I use for stripping these wires is you can use either regular wire strippers or oh, I should have been a little more prepared for this. You can use just regular wire strippers, which is my usually my go-to thing because I use it at work all the time. Or you can use the vice grips strippers. These these are nice too. So I can set you down here for a minute. For these, you're going to want about a three quarter inch or so strip off here. And it makes a nice clean cut. And it'll cut almost any gauge wire. Just get it where you want it. Squeeze. There. You have nice clean cuts. Okay. And then, I've seen a lot of people making. <laughs> drives me nuts when I see people you know twist wires the wrong way so I'll show you how to twist it where you won't have any real issues here okay the one is kind of kind of blind because some people take the wires need more lighting and they do they twist it like so That is a huge no-no. Don't twist, especially for your camper. 
Don't twist like that. It pop right off. And even if you even if you solder it, when it's like that, it's not that strong and it looks like crap. Even though you'll never see it again. The best way to do it, get these out of the way. After you get your wire stripped about three quarters of an inch, go almost halfway in and just twist them evenly. My hands are going to be in the way for a second, but hang on. Do it real tight. As you can see, you get a nice clean, clean wire. You can run your shrink tubing over it and shrink it and it'll look really clean and nice and it's a lot stronger than twisting them together. And once they're solder on that, you're not going to be able to pull it apart without breaking in the, one of the ends. So twisting them, don't do that. And then this way, it's good and strong. You can solder it up and then put your shrink tubing over it and then when you're done, and then you're done. Uh, for tape on this, I don't I don't use electrical tape too often on stuff like that. I use, believe it or not, hockey tape. It's the same stuff they use for hockey sticks. What I like about this stuff, it's a really heavy cloth material and it's super sticky. I don't know if you ever picked up a hockey stick before, but you can feel that tape after it's been on for a while and you're not getting it off. And it's water resistant and it works really really well like i said don't use buck connectors and don't twist the wires together inside or that way because if you do if something were to happen on the inside here you're sol so i don't know i don't know how that's uh simply say that but you're gonna be screwed okay now once you have that done you're stripped wires run Everything is going to run into your, well, in this case, I'm using this light, but yours may vary. But this is going to go in this, it's labeled plus minus, plus minus, so it's pretty straightforward, red, black. And so once we get that in there, always run an inline fuse. I have a fuse panel in my teardrop, I can show you in a minute how I have mine set up. And once you have that, you're, you're good to go. You have your lights hooked up. And this will be the same thing for, like I said, for any device, whether it's a cigarette lighter, um, switches, everything is just going to run through here. It makes it super simple. And I'll, sh I'll do it real quick, set it all up, and then I'll show you exactly how it's run. All right, figure how i show you how I... Uh solder it up here obviously you're not going to have these alligator clamps and all that stuff uh, in your campers but it gives you the basic idea of you know what it should look like so let's see you don't want when you twist these wires you don't want to twist them too tight because you want the solder to actually go through like so and that's it. And you're not going to be able to pull that apart without breaking one of the ends. So, go ahead and do the other side. Like I said, about halfway. Do it real tight. I know my hands are going to be in the way, but small wire. It's a 18 gauge. So you know that's why I, that's why I use. It's easy to work with and it's pretty strong. There you go. And can't teardrops don't. You're not gonna draw a lot of voltage on there anyways for your LED lights and all your other stuff. So you'll be fine. Like I said, I run a lot of stuff in my camper right now. I haven't had any issues yet. That's it. And to make it, once it cools down enough, not yet. I put shrink tubing on before I uh, put the wires together, obviously. Do this quick enough, there we go. And then, 
get a little heat gun. You can get these anywhere. And we do the same thing for the red wire. That's it. And you're not pulling these apart without breaking something. I also put a little shrink wrapping on the, uh, the wire there where it comes out. A little, little half piece. Just so it's nice and clean. And then when you're, uh, you're all done, you get yourself some... I don't know if you're going to have this much space. So I'm just doing this for demonstration, but... Typically, I won't have that much extra space. Then just wrap it up in the hockey tape. Right, we're done with that. And I can really tear this by hand easily. So, and you can get hockey tape on eBay, Amazon, you can get three rolls for like 20 bucks. That'll last you a long time. And there you go. So that's not going to fail. And it'll be good to go for a long, long time. That's it. So next we're going to hook up the, uh, the power. Alright. Okay, now we got the wire done, soldered up. Looking good. Now we're gonna put this in the positive part. Like I said, this is for this particular switch, but pretty much it's the same idea with every switch. So we're gonna, this is just uh, no soldering or crimping or anything, just there's little screws that lock these wires in place. It's pros and cons to it. Cons being they can come loose over time, so you do have to check them but other than that, makes installation easy. So there we go. That's done. And this side will go straight to the battery. This one here, and then there is a fuse in place. Right here. All right, so in theory, <laughs> there's the on off switch. Once I plug in the Okay, so we're going to use that off. Once I plug in the ground over here, we should have power. There we go. And that's pretty much all there is to wiring it up. Oh, with this uh, particular switch, you can see it's a slide, so you can you can dim it with your finger. So that's pretty cool. That's going to be going into the teardrop I'm doing over here. It's going to have uh, recessed lighting in it too. I'll show you how I got the wiring run for that one in a second. But yep, it's a great little switch. So cool. Yep. So you just put it wherever you want it. You can have like a little reading light. There you go. And you can have on off. So that's pretty much it for the wiring. I mean, it's the same for, like I said, if you're gonna run it to an outside light, like a little, like I think they're called porch lights, whatever, but you can just run it here. It'll be the same thing, except for to go out here. Uh, it'll be the same for the fan. You'd run it over to where the, uh, where the fan's going to go. And you just do the same wire wiring and everything else. So, and that's basically it. And this is what I was saying about this clip here because I already screwed it in. Makes it nice and makes it nice so it doesn't move around and you can still get insulation under it. Keeps everything nice and organized.
like I said, you don't want to burn down your camper over something stupid. And this will go into the ceiling. I know this little makeshift thing is a little haggard, but that's what it's for. And that's that. So hopefully that helps. Um, if you want, I can show you guys how to high wire switches up. Because I have some, do I have, yes, I do have a two panel switches over here, somewhere here. It's regular RV switches. Just double on off. But I have, another, I have another set of white ones. I just got to find them. I have so much stuff around here. It's crazy. But, but yeah, it's a really simple setup. Anybody can do it. And like I said, just don't keep batteries inside your camper. Keep them out on the tongue. Because if these things leak, you're done. You don't want that mess. And that's, that's pretty much all there is. All this takes just a few minutes. Yeah. So... Hopefully they answer some questions some people are having about wiring. Very, very simple. Because normally, you know, camper wire is a black is uh, positive and this well, it's supposed to be, it should be white, but white is the ground. But I prefer using good old red and black. That way they don't screw up. Actually, I have one run for this one. And you can see I got two in the back and then I have there is the other one one here and one down there I'll cut off the excess and I always like to leave some inside for you know the device had to get changed for whatever reason there's room to work so I usually leave some wire up there but it's just a regular red black so that's how I have that and I'll show you real quick on my on my teardrop how I have the uh, fuse panel how I recommend everybody do it okay Let me get the camera down in here it looks complicated but it really isn't uh, you would have your power positive come through the bottom and your ground through the top and these are your negatives over here and all your positives are right there so this would go to you know say the lights the outside light um, USB chargers and it's really dark but there we go USB chargers and all that. I just added this three setup in here So we have more than enough stuff to We to charge everything But yeah, this is how I I'm gonna start doing all the other ones for now on because it's very well, Looks messier than it is because there's just extra stuff in here right now But it Keeps everything clean and organized uh, I just use five amp five uh, amp fuses just because I'm running LED lights. They don't draw much and so I think that's about it. So hopefully this helps people out and they can wire up theirs and not have to worry about burning down their projects or their house if they're working in the house. But I don't know, it's, it's, it's really not that complicated. Anybody with basic soldering skills can do it. Like I said, don't twist wires together. Do, do not do that and don't put wire nuts on it. Just try to do everything as clean as possible. All right, uh, if you want a video on switches or anything like that, just leave a comment. I can do it. Um, also, I'm going to do a video on GPS tracking for your, uh, your campers or cars or whatever. This is a system I use. All right. See you guys later. Oh, yeah, one more thing. The um, thing I forgot to mention is don't use butt connectors to put your two wires together where you crimp these in the middle don't use these because they do pull out you know they, they come out rather easily sometimes sometimes you think you have a good crimp but you don't you can pull the wire you know by where the battery is and you can yank this out from the ceiling and not even know it until it's too late 
then you have to rip your ceiling out or and just don't use butt connectors like I said the way I showed you is like the easiest way and safest way all right guys well like again I hope this helps people um, let's try and make it as easy as possible all right like I said if you need want to see any other videos just let me know I can whip some up for you all right